This presentation will be about the basics of transformers. Faraday's law basically states that a changing magnetic field will generate a voltage. So let's say you have two coils of wire and you apply alternating current to one of them. Now due to the rapidly changing magnetic field it will create a voltage in the second coil. Now this is what transformers are based off of. Of course they will refine this to take advantage of it more efficiently. So a couple of the equations for transformers is Vs Is is going to be equal to Vp Ip. Now this is basically the conservation of energy, which means voltage times current on the secondary is going to be equal to voltage times current of the primary. The second equation in the uh, ratio of turns is going to be equal to the ratio of voltages. So your number of secondary turns over your number of primary turns is going to be equal to your primary or secondary voltage over your primary voltage. Now these are fairly close but since transformers are not 100% efficient they will be slightly different. Now one of the losses of transformers is going to be eddy currents which means that um, a current will actually be flowing in the steel core and that will cause losses there. And then there will also be leakage flux, in which let's say you have yourself a you know, transformer coil here. And then you have the primary coil, which would be the one on the left, be generating a magnetic flux here. And then in this exaggerated image you can see that the magnetic flux being generated is not fully penetrating the secondary coil. See, some of it is outside of the coil and hence being wasted. Now of course keep in mind this image is exaggerated. So. Now one more loss of transformers is going to be the resistance of the coils which will uh, be converted into heat. Now a quick example problem is going to be this. It's fairly easy, so Jacqueline has an old soldering gun she wants to rewind. She doesn't know how many turns on the primary, but she does know the primary uses 120 volts and the secondary has one turn and puts out 0.5 volts. How many turns does the primary coil have? So we're going to go ahead and we're going to use the equation from the other page, which basically means that the number of turns on the primary over the number of turns on the secondary it's going to be equal to the voltage on the primary over the voltage of the secondary so we go ahead and plug in what we have here so we have 120 volts that's going to be the voltage on the primary got 0.5 volts the voltage on the secondary. The secondary has one turn. So one there. Let me go ahead and cross multiply and solve this. So 120 times 1 divided by 0.5 will give us 240 turns on the primary coil. Now kind of going off topic here of this question You may be saying, well, what's the use of half a volt? Well, due to the conservation of energy, let me go set up another quick example here. So let's say you have a transformer. It's got a whole bunch of windings on the primary, and then only a few windings on the secondary. And let's say you go ahead and apply 120 volts on the primary at 5 amps and then on secondary you get 0.8 volts out now due to the uh, energy uh, conservation of energy you're going to have 120 times 5 it's going to be equal to 0.8 times the number of amps it can provide 
So you go ahead and do 120 times 5 divided by 0 0.8 will give us 750. So this means this uh, secondary coil can provide 750 amps. So the energy from the primary is not lost. It's still there. It's just been converted into the amps instead of volts. And the same would apply if, let's say, you switched this and applied the 120 volts 5 amps to this coil and turn this to a step up transformer it will step up the voltage at the result of having lower amps this is a microwave oven transformer it is used in the microwave to produce the roughly 2000 volts necessary to drive the magnetron normally these are set up as a step up transformer to step up 120 volts AC to the roughly 2000 volts AC necessary to drive the magnetron. So what I've done today is I've taken one and I've cut it apart see and I've replaced the original secondary coil with one turn of thick copper wire. Now of course I didn't use this transformer but I've instead used a much larger transformer which is roughly twice the size So first I'm going to show you how many amps this transformer can produce. So let me go ahead and set it up right quick. Put a multimeter on it. And this is how many amps it's going to produce in a dead short. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. You seen that right? 672 amps going through this wire. So let me go ahead and set up the next part. So the second thing I'm going to show you is how much heat it can produce during a dead short. So let me go ahead and plug it in. Let me just wait a moment for it to heat up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to melt some solder onto this piece of pipe that's being shorted. There we go. And this solder melts at around 500 degrees, so that's how hot that pipe was getting during a short. So now, let me go ahead and set up the next part. So what I've done now, was I put a thin piece of copper wire across two um, terminals here, which will heat up, then I'll use that to cut this plastic milk jug in half. So I'm going to go ahead and hand the camera off to my sister here. Wait a second for it to heat up.
and as you can see here, it's cut clean in two. And as you can tell, it's quite fun to do.